The third part of the security workshop is around enabling perimeter security via Knox. Knox allows us to enable a single point in the cluster to access the Hadoop REST APIs, JDBC, and URL calls. It's actually available on the sandbox, which will what we'll be using, and we'll be configuring Knox to authenticate using the free IPA we installed. Uh, once that's done, we're going to configure WebHDFS and Hive Server 2 to support uh, JDBC, ODBC access over HTTP. And as a final demo, we'd be able to use Excel to access Hive via Knox over HTTPS. By bringing Knox into the mix, we are eliminating the need for users to authenticate using Kerberos. As a first step, we're going to open up Ambari and uh, add a few uh, config parameters to the HDFS. So if we do a filter by proxy users, we'll notice that there's a number of proxy users already set up, but Knox isn't one of them. So let's just copy the values for Knox as well. So Knox.groups is going to get star, and Knox.hosts is going to get sandbox. Once that's done, we're going to restart HDFS. Once that's complete, we're going to point Knox to the same Kerberos config file that IPA created earlier. So in this case, we're just going to create a soft link to it so to avoid maintaining two versions of the file. Next, we're going to open up the curb JAS login file and uh, add the uh, configuration to let it know where the key tab file is and the principal file. Next, we open up the gateway site.xml and let Knox know that security is enabled by modifying the hadoop.kerberos.secured from false to true. Next, we can open up the topology file under nox.conf-topologies-sandbox.xml and change the uh, LDAP realm uh, user, DN uh, user DN template. So just point that to your uh, user's uh, template. So we're going to use UID and then CN users, accounts, Hortonworks, comp. And then the last thing we need to change is the actual URL, which is just the LDAP IPAHortonworks.com on port 389. Once that's done, we can just uh, restart the Knox gateway. Let's wait for the HDFS to um, restart in the meantime. Let's start the gateway and redeploy. So we can check on our deployments once that's done by uh, doing a, a long ls on the data deployments directory. And here we see that there are new de uh, deployments available. So now that it's done, we can run a curl request uh, using Ali Hortonworks as login and point to the 8443 port that Knox is listening on. And here we're just doing a simple request on WebHDFS to do a directory listing. And here, as you can see, it's uh, returned back in JSON format uh, directory listing. Let's try another one. Let's look under the user guest directory. And it seems to be empty. So notice so far we were passing in the username and password, but what if uh, we didn't want to pass that in every single time. We can actually just pass in the cookie after the first request 
and uh, access it that way. So here, let's change the, the J session ID uh, we're getting back from Knox and then resubmit the query using the dash dash cookie uh, argument instead of dash u. And here we were able to um, rerun the same thing but without passing in the username and password. Now let's try something more interesting. Let's try to open up a file via Knox. So opening up a file via Knox is a two-step process. First, you request the file and it'll point you to the location. And then you need to uh, copy that location, um, the, the contents of that location uh, parameter and uh, stick that into your next uh, query. So here we're gonna do another curl, dash x get. But here we're gonna copy and paste the whole location past. Once we do that, and you can notice that it's the location of the file as well as a, a security token. And here I was able to open up the, the sonnet file. So under user hue job sub sample data sonnets.txt, it was able to open that up. So you can actually also uh, query this using Groovy. So there's some sample scripts to do this. So this one just does a very simple directory listing. Uh, the only thing we need to change here is the username and password. So I'm gonna change that to Paul and Hortonworks. And then I'm gonna execute that, skip, that script using the the Knox bin shell jar. And it should give me a directory listing that I was looking for, and it does. So you can run this the same, uh, instead of running through curl, you can open up a browser and run the same requests. So let's try to run the, the query over there. And it'll prompt for a username password. I'm gonna enter in um, Paul and Hortonworks. and the request succeeded. We can try to um, open up one of the other requests, look under user hue job sub sample data. There's a couple of files there. Let's open up the sonnets file. And as you can see, I was able to download the sonnets.txt using um, webhdfs over Knox. So now let's try to do the same with Hive. So what are the extra configuration we need to do for that? So go into Hive config and make some changes to the Hive server two parameters. So if you filter by server.2, these are all actually new parameters. So you need to add those to the custom Hive site.xml. So it's the HTTP path is CLI service. The port is 10,001. The transport mode is HTTP. Uh, we have to provide the uh, Spinego uh, key tabs as the requests are gonna start going over HTTP now. The Spinego principle. So once those are complete, you can save those out and then restart Hive.
So now we, we need to give uh, access to all users to that gateway.jks file. So note this is not a file that contains any keys, it's just the trust store, so that's all right. And we need to do that because in the beeline request, we're actually going to pass in this JKS file, as you'll see in a minute. So let's uh, su to Ali user. Make sure that he can access that uh, gateway.jks file. Make sure it's readable as well. Yeah, looks good. Let's do a beeline. And this time in the beeline connection, you'll notice that we're connecting to the sandbox on port 8443, passing in SSL true, and passing in the trust store and a couple other parameters. For username and password, I'm going to specify Ali and Hortonworks. Now, if I try to run the show tables command, that works. Let's describe sample 07. That doesn't work because Ali user doesn't have access to all the columns on sample 07. If we go back to the XA secure, we notice that user Ali's request for sample 07 was denied. Let's try to run a count star on sample 07. That also fails. And as you can see, it was denied in the audit trail. Let's try a sample 08, that seems to work. Go back to the audit and we can see it was allowed. So the other interesting thing we can show uh, here is to um, try to connect via ODBC on a Windows machine. So on that machine, you would need to install the Hive ODBC driver from hortonworks.com uh, slash HTTP slash add-ons. And once you have that, it'll show up here and you can create an ODBC entry using that Hortonworks Hive ODBC driver. And for this example, let's just give it secured sandbox two. I think I already have one. For host, we're gonna provide the uh, IP address of the sandbox VM. The port is going to be 8443 since we have Knox enabled. Knox is listening on that port. Database is default is fine. We'll connect, connect to Hive Server 2. And the mechanism is going to be HTTPS. The HTTP path is going to be gateway slash sandbox slash Hive. And under username, we can pass uh, Ali and Hortonworks as a password. And we can do a quick test to make sure that's working. Connected successfully. So now that the ODBC is set up, let's go ahead and try to open up an Excel spreadsheet and try to import data from Knox um, over HTTPS. So let's go a new blank workbook under data, go under get external data from other sources, from data connection wizard, ODBC, secured sandbox 2, the one we just created. Uh, same parameters, just enter the password once and hit OK. Wait for a couple of seconds. And now we see it shows a couple of tables, seven and eight. Let's pick seven. We know it doesn't have access. Enter the password again. So it's going to try and access table sample 07 as user Ali. And immediately we get uh, the same uh, exception that we've been seeing all along. Go back to uh, Ranger and look at the audit and we see, in fact, it was denied.
Let's try the same using a different table. So go into ODBC DSN, Secured Sandbox 2, password is Hortonworks. This time we'll pick sample 08, or let's pick sample 07 and change the query. That might be more interesting. So under properties, we can go under definition, and here you can actually modify the query that it runs. So here we're going to change it to, instead of star, to say codes and description. And hit OK. Password one more time and OK. It's going to wait for the query to be executed for a couple of seconds. And here we see the data has been pulled. As we requested the code and description columns, we just see the code and description columns. And we see there are a thousand records here. So that's the end of part three. And we've basically shown how users can access the cluster via the gateway service. This also brings us to the end of the security workshop where we took a vanilla HTTP 2.1 sandbox and enabled authentication via Kerberos, authorization and audit via Ranger, perimeter security via Knox. We hope you have enjoyed this workshop and found it useful and look forward to your feedback. Thank you for attending.